skating's been called the sport of the 90s, and watching these skaters, it's easy to see why. Besides being a great workout, inline skating provides something many forms of exercise fail to deliver. Fun. Of course, you already know that, or you wouldn't be watching this video. What you really want to know is, how do I use these things? Well, that's what we're here for. show you how to master the basics of skating, then demonstrate some advanced techniques to really get your wheels moving. But first, let's take a look at the gear. If you're like most of us, the first time you saw a pair of inline skates, you wondered if you could even stand up on them, much less move down the road on them. Well, don't worry. With the right gear, skating is safe and easy to learn. Let's start with the skates. There are a number of inline skate manufacturers, and the styles and quality of the skates vary greatly. Skates are fastened with either buckles or laces, or a combination of both. In either case, fasten your skates as tightly as comfortable for maximum stability and control. If your skates are lace up, make sure to pull the laces tight after wrapping each speed loop. Then do one overhand knot before wrapping the laces once around the skates between the two speed loops. Finish with a single or double bow knot tied as tightly as possible. Properly fastened skates will provide you with all the ankle support you need to skate properly. But remember to choose a quality pair of skates with a firm shell for total support. Many skates allow you to adjust the front and back wheels for increased maneuverability, which is important for advanced skating methods. Consult your manual for proper skate maintenance. Taking care of your skates will provide increased safety and better skating. If your skates have wheels which can be rotated, this should be done on a regular basis. Rotating your wheels will allow your wheels to wear evenly, resulting in longer wheel life and increased control. And as you can see here, it's quick and easy when using the right tools. Protective gear is an absolute must for all skaters. It'll give you the confidence you need to improve your skating and it'll help prevent injury in the event of a fall. Wrist guards should be worn at all times. Wrists are extremely vulnerable in a fall because we often break a fall with our hands. Keep your fingers up and let the guard plate take the impact. Knees are also a primary point of impact, so it's best to keep them covered, especially if you're a beginning skater or if you're performing difficult maneuvers. Elbows can also be seriously injured if they take a hard hit so get a pair of elbow pads as well. Helmets are always a good idea, especially for beginning, high speed, and trick skating. 
As for clothing, whatever makes you comfortable, just wear it. Athletic gear, which allows a free range of movement, is recommended. But when it comes to skating, anything goes. When you're just starting out, you should skate at speeds that allow you to stay in control while you're getting the feel of your skates and learning how to stop. The best and safest way to learn balance and control is to put on your skates and start with a few grass exercises. Begin by simply standing in place and bending at the knees. Keep your feet shoulder width apart as you bend your knees forward over your toes. As you do this, you will feel your weight centered on the balls of your feet. You'll want to keep your weight on the balls of your feet in almost all skating situations. Next, try transferring your weight back and forth between your toes and your heels. There's a natural tendency for skaters to lean back on their skates when they feel a loss of control. This is exactly what you don't want to do. If you ever feel out of control, just remember to keep your weight centered on the balls of your feet. Inline skates have four edges, two inside, two outside. Beginning skaters should concentrate on keeping your weight on the inside edges because they control forward movement and turning. Practice bending at the knees while transferring your weight back and forth between your two inside edges. This exercise will help you develop proper weight transference for turning. Stepping from one foot to the other is also a good way to develop proper weight transference technique. It also gets you used to having all your weight on one skate, which is important for advanced skating. Last up, the duck walk. Put your feet at an angle with your heels together and toes out. Then step forward one skate over the other. When you transfer this exercise to pavement, you'll be skating. Start in an empty parking lot free of cars and other obstacles. The basic skating stride involves transferring your weight from one leg to the other as you move yourself forward by pushing off the inside of your edges. As your primary weighted leg is pointed ahead and gliding, you propel yourself by pushing your other leg to the side, making sure to push with the full length of your inside edge. Many novice skaters make the mistake of pushing their skates back instead of to the side, resulting in a loss of power, balance, and control. Just remember, push to the side using the full length of your inside edge. We cannot overemphasize the importance of learning proper basic technique. If you learn properly here, you'll advance more quickly and skate safer. When you feel comfortable and in control, Move out of the parking lot and you're on your way. Turning is also best learned in a big empty parking lot. When turning, your weight should be placed on the inside edge of your outside leg, opposite the direction you're turning. So in other words, if you're turning left, most of your weight is on the inside edge of your right skate and vice versa. As you initiate your turn, bend your knees deeply, pointing your outside knee, your head, shoulders and hands in the direction you want to go.
Keep repeating this exercise until you feel comfortable turning in both directions. Next, try combining the basic stride with turning. As you push off your inside edge, initiate your turn in the direction opposite your propelling leg. Again, practice until you're comfortable turning both left and right. Skating in a large circle is also a good way to develop your turning. Skate in clockwise and counterclockwise circles so that you don't tend to favor turning only in one direction. After this exercise, you'll be ready to move out of the parking lot and on to bigger turf. When you're first learning to skate, stay in areas where you can maintain control and avoid dangerous obstacles, especially traffic. As for protective gear, at minimum wrist guards and knee pads should be worn, but a helmet and elbow pads are always a good idea. The most often asked question about inline skating is, how do I stop these things? Well, relax. When you use the proper techniques, stopping is easy and fun even. First, let's learn how to use the heel brake. Again, practice body positioning and balance in the grass. In one motion, bend forward at the waist, bend your knees, and bring your braking foot forward while tilting the toe of your skate up and applying pressure to the brake by shifting most of your weight to the braking leg. Your hands should be kept in front of you to maintain your balance. Once you feel comfortable, proceed to a parking lot to practice in motion. Your feet should be kept shoulder width apart and remember, hands in front. Tilt up and apply pressure. The more pressure you apply, the better the brake works. When first learning, build up just a little speed from a standstill position before applying the brake. As your confidence and ability grow, use the brake at higher speeds. The most common mistake is to stand up straight and lean back on the brake. This makes the brake ineffective and may result in a fall. Relax and lean forward. The T-stop is an excellent way to slow down or come to a complete stop. Practice the braking action in the grass. One foot is used as a gliding foot and the other foot is used as a braking foot. The basic action is to turn your braking foot perpendicular to your gliding foot. Then gradually apply pressure to the inside edge of the skate to reduce your speed. Once you're familiar with the motion, move on to the pavement. From your basic stride, move into a gliding position with your feet shoulder width apart, then initiate the T-stop. Let's look at it once close up. It's important to note that most of your weight is centered on the gliding leg, and that your weight is transferred to your braking leg gradually. 
This slow weight transfer onto your braking foot allows your wheels to slide across the pavement as you slow down. The result is a smooth, balanced stop. The T-stop is an easy technique to learn and will help you develop necessary skills for more advanced braking methods. The spin stop is a great way to come to a quick, complete stop. Practice the stopping action by lifting one skate off the ground and pivoting heel to heel at approximately a 120 degree angle. Note that the toe touches the ground slightly before the heel does. This will help initiate the spin. After you've practiced several times, you're back in skating. From your stride, move into the gliding position. Lift and turn your foot, touch your toe, and spin. After your spin, complete the stop by bringing your feet into a wedge. As you learn this maneuver, you will notice that you'll have to lean into the spin to compensate for the centrifugal force created by the move. The faster you spin, the more you'll have to lean in. As you spin, you should maintain as wide a stance as comfortable and balance your weight on both feet equally. As with all stopping methods, start slow and speed it up as your technique improves. Obstacles are always best avoided, but when that's not possible, there are methods to help you deal with them. Water is something all skaters will encounter sooner or later. First glide straight through the water. After clearing the water, work the water off your wheels before resuming your stride. This technique can be used for both oil and water, but in both cases, make sure the liquid has been worked off your wheels and that you have regained full traction before returning to your stride. One small rock can down even the most advanced skater, so try to stay away from them. However, if you can't avoid them, here's what you do. Keep your feet shoulder width apart and keep your weight centered on the balls of your feet. Then roll straight through, clearing the rocks before resuming your stride. The most important thing to remember is to stay loose and relax. Just maintain proper balance and body positioning. It's also a good idea to stagger one foot in front of the other for even greater stability. Sand can also be hazardous if not dealt with properly. As with the previous obstacles, glide through the sand with a wide stance and be light on your feet. Eventually, you may be in a situation where you are forced to turn while encountering sand. If this happens, turn gradually and avoid hard edging. Even though you are turning, roll through the obstacle and make sure it's cleared before returning to your stride. Skating over cracks can make skaters nervous. However, the design of your skates keeps most of your wheel base on the ground even while encountering cracks. This allows you to glide over the cracks with relative ease. 
It's a good idea to stagger your stance while gliding to maximize stability. If you find yourself in a situation where you're skating parallel to a crack, make sure your skates cross the crack at an angle while maintaining a strong, steady stride. Never allow the wheels of your skate to run directly parallel into a crack. Undoubtedly, you will have to navigate stairs from time to time. Make sure you grasp the handrail with both hands when going up or down the stairs. To ascend the stairs, the herringbone technique is best. Just take one step at a time and be careful. To go down, approach the stairs from a stopped position and grab the handrail before taking your first step. Your feet should run parallel to the steps with your toes pointed toward the handrail. Again, take your time to be safe. careful around traffic, especially if you're a novice, and obey all posted signs. They're for your own good. After waiting to cross the street, step off the curb, use a T-stop or your heel brake to slow down. Then step back onto the sidewalk and you're ready to go. If at all possible, skate on sidewalks and avoid skating on the street. If you're a beginner, it's best to avoid traffic altogether. As you skate, you'll encounter other obstacles, but common sense will tell you how to deal with them. Okay, your gear's on, you've mastered the basic stride, and you turn with ease. You can stop on a dime, and you feel confidence, not fear, when you come across an obstacle. Let's get some speed and have some fun. We'll start with the advanced stride. The advanced stride begins with your basic skating action, but you move your legs faster and thrust your legs harder, digging your edges with each stroke. As you get up to speed, slow down the number of strokes you take and instead concentrate on an elongated, powerful stride with good arm extension and follow through. Like with basic, push your skates to the side, not back, and make sure you are pushing off the entire length of your wheelbase to ensure full power. If you come across curves, stay in your full stride, use crossover turns if necessary, and maintain your speed. The only reason you should have to slow down is to avoid something in your path. The most common mistake in advanced stride is not drawing the propelling leg all the way back in after completing a stroke. Note that the skate returns all the way underneath the skater before a new stroke is initiated. This allows better gliding and provides a more powerful stroke.
The best way to improve your stride is to learn the technique and then cover lots of ground. Next up, backward skating. Backward skating utilizes the same balance and basic positioning as forward skating. But unlike forward skating, both skates, for the most part, remain on the ground. At any given time, one leg will be thrusting while the other leg is gliding. To begin with, center your upper body over one leg. This is your gliding leg. Your thrusting leg will pivot out at the heel using your inside edge to carve a C. When you're halfway through the C and your leg is straight out to your side, pivot your heel inward and draw your leg back in to complete the C. You then initiate the C stroke with your other leg. Backward skating is essentially repeating this motion over and over again. As your backward skating improves, it becomes second nature. You'll find you can turn and maneuver with the same ease as you do skating forward, and speed will not be a problem. Learning to skate backwards is essential if you desire to play street hockey, but besides that, it's a lot of fun. Transitions are used to change from forward to backward skating and vice versa while staying in motion. Most of your weight is centered on your gliding skate while your other skate initiates the rotation. As the skate completes its rotation, transfer weight to this leg and let the other skate follow. It's a good idea to practice transitions in a parking lot, making sure to practice your rotations in both directions. As with backward skating, transitions are essential if you want to play dry land hockey and they are a must for advanced street skating as well. Just keep your weight centered on your feet and make smooth rotations. Knee pads are a good idea while learning transitions and as always, wrist guards are a must. Forward and backward crossovers are a fun and exciting way to turn while maintaining or gaining speed. A few parking lot exercises will help you develop proper crossover technique. First side steps. Step one foot over the other four or five times to the left, then repeat moving to the right, then back to the left, etc. Next, step overs. While skating forward, step your left foot over your right, then your right over your left, and so on. Last, Skate in a tight circle around an object using crossovers to make your turn. Do this exercise clockwise and counterclockwise to ensure strong crossovers in either direction. If you're advanced enough, make a transition and practice crossovers while skating backwards. Your back should be straight and your shoulders level when doing crossovers. Avoid the common mistake of dropping your shoulder in the direction you're turning. This results in a loss of balance. The skate on the side in which you are turning pushes off its outside edge, while the skate crossing over pushes off its inside edge. After you complete the stroke, your other foot lifts and steps forward, landing and gliding again on its outside edge. Continue to cross over until your turn is complete. It is important that both feet stroke with equal force to produce continuous speed. Many people tend to favor crossovers in one direction or the other but this can be overcome with practice. Speed skating can be the most exhilarating yet relaxing of all skating methods. Good technique is fluid with no wasted or abrupt motion. A full stride starts from the ground up. It's an extension of the entire body. Smooth glide must be maintained between each stroke. No 
Note that all of your weight is on your thrusting leg at the beginning of each stroke. As you thrust, your upper body moves in the opposite direction of your thrusting leg and your weight is transferred to your gliding leg. This is how you set up your next stroke. In speed skating, what's important is not how fast you move, but how long and powerful your stroke is. Correct arm movement is extremely important. The arms are driven forward, not side to side. Notice that at the end of each stroke, a straight line can be drawn from the forward hand to the thrusting skate. This is perfect speed skating technique. Also note that your thrust actually begins on your outside edge, and as you push to the side, your stroke is completed with the inside edge of the skate. This allows you the longest possible stride for maximum power. Here you can see that when you bring your skate back to set up your next stroke, the skate actually goes past the center of your body before touching ground. This is how you set up for beginning your thrust on your outside edge. Once you are comfortable with the speed skating technique, it can be performed with one or both hands behind your back. Tricks are definitely not for everyone, but for those of you that want to try, make sure you wear protective gear. Tricks are really only limited by the imagination, so we'll just show you some of the basics to get you started. We'll start with the power slide. From your stride, go into a short glide before transferring most of your weight to your gliding leg while fully extending your braking skate out to slide across the pavement. Note the speed of the skater while performing this trick. Protective gear is mandatory. Here you can see that the upper body is positioned above the gliding leg and the arms are extended for better stability and balance. As you transfer weight to your sliding skate, you will begin standing up and by the time you stop, you'll be standing upright. Now we'll look at the backwards power slide. The backwards power slide is essentially the same as the power slide, except it's performed while skating backwards. Look over your shoulders before initiating your stop to choose the spot where you want to stop. Make sure you perform these stops on clean, dry pavement with a fairly smooth surface. We should warn you that all of these stops will take their toll on your skates. Sliding the side of your skates across pavement at high speed while applying pressure is obviously going to cause wear and tear. But for some of you, the fun will make it worthwhile.
Last, the spinning power slide. The spinning power slide is again similar to the power slide, but with this stop you complete a three-quarter spin before going into your slide. Notice that while you are spinning, you fully extend your sliding leg, while your upper body weight is centered over your gliding skate. Your sliding leg should be fully extended and your skate should remain at a sharp angle to the pavement. Don't forget to transfer your weight gradually and come to a complete stop before standing up. Learning to spin will help you refine your balance and your ability to perform toe heel maneuvers, which are important in virtually all aspects of advanced and trick skating. Extend your arms to each side, keeping your head forward and shoulders square. Turn your arms and shoulders at least one quarter rotation opposite the direction of your spin. Initiate your spin by thrusting your arms firmly and smoothly and allow your head to follow. The harder you thrust, the faster you will spin. To come out of a spin, extend your arms back out to each side for balance, slow down, and stop. As you go into your spin, you will pivot onto the toe of one skate and the heel of the other. Toe heel spins are the most common and the easiest to perform. To come out of the spin, as you extend your arms back out, widen your stance, and come off your toe and heel. One more thing to note is that as you begin spinning, if you draw your arms close to your body, you will spin faster. The closer you draw them in, the faster you will spin. As you get better, spins can be performed toe heel, heel heel, or toe toe. Sooner or later, you'll want to get airborne. Body positioning, balance, and confidence are the keys to successful jumping. It's a good idea to practice your technique in the grass with your shoes on before attempting even the smallest jump on your skates. You should be an expert skater before you even try to jump, and even then, don't do it if you're not absolutely confident in your ability. Start by simply going over curves. Make sure there is no traffic from either direction before jumping off any curve. As you prepare to jump, keep your hands in front of you, shoulders square, and your head up looking forward. Looking at your feet will cause a loss of balance. Wind up and jump. As you land, keep your hands in front of you and bend deeply at the knees and waist to absorb the impact. When you've perfected the curb jump, choose a small breakaway object to jump over. The key to jumping is a good takeoff. This will give you control in the air for a good landing. As you approach your jump, bend deep at the waist and knees and bring your arms back. Thrust your arms in a forward arc while pushing evenly off the balls of your feet. Note that in your approach, take off, in the air, and on your landing, your head remains up and forward, your shoulders square, your waist and knees bent, and your hands are in front except while bringing them back for the forward thrust. This is perfect jumping technique. As your ability increases, try jumping the obstacle by pushing off one foot only. Make sure you push firmly and smoothly. After you've perfected the obstacle jump, find a small curb lift to begin ramp jumping.
The method used here is the same as what we just demonstrated, but be extra careful to keep your weight balanced on the balls of your feet during takeoff. Once you've got ramp jumping down, try throwing in a trick or two. Or maybe three. We cannot stress enough, never jump beyond your ability. This is not the time to succumb to peer pressure. Well enough said. Enough to get you started anyway. I know we've covered a lot, but we've only really scratched the surface of all the skating possibilities. So the rest is up to you. Just remember, skate for fun, advance at your own speed to whatever level you desire. It's all about having fun and getting into shape. We're out of here.